Hello everyone and welcome back. A season on the wish has brought forward some interesting seasonal mods for us to give a try on, and this season's mods has made the Palevis Lance a PvE meta king overnight. By just having Killing Flame and Flint Striker, these alone can make any solo build a powerhouse to use in endgame from start till finish, and I'm going to show you how with the help of Dawn Chorus backing us up. Now if you like infinite reload, heavy primary damage non-stop, easy scorch ignitions outside of your abilities and being able to turn your brain off, then today's build will suit your need quite easily. To start you're going to want to have touch of flames so that fusion grenades can explode twice, then you want heat rises where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air, while airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. For fragments, Ember of Solace where restoration and radiant effect last longer, Ember of Searing where defeating Scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprite, Ember of Shah where your solar ignition spreads Scorched to affected targets, and Ember of Ashes where you apply more Scorched stacks to targets. The following setup will enhance our Scorched and ignition capability even more and allow us to retain a high damage usage over a defect as long as possible. Ember of Ashes is a must as this with Dawn Cores will enhance our Scorch damage to either outright kill targets faster or push them enough to trigger ignition. Then applying Ember of Shards to the mix will allow ignition effect from all sources to spread its effect non-stop. Most importantly though, having Ember of Solace will make sure our Radiant Effect will last longer even when Kindling Trigger is not active. I can also see Ember of Benevolence and Imperium working for the build as long as a few key abilities and fragments are changed to accompany them. Of course, this is optional as they will change up the playstyle slightly. For the mods and stats, we will be using a high resilience, discipline and strength will all be the key components of the build to focus on in conjunction with our subclass. Resilience at tier 10 will give us a 30% damage resistance while playing content. There isn't anything specific that is required for the stat to be this high, however, Having a start this high will help with surviving lethal encounters when playing Legend, Master and Grandmaster content by a lot. We'll also be using our Well of Radiance as part of the build, so all in all, the build will excel well in user survival. Discipline, we have R at tier 10 with a 37 second grenade cooldown when using fusion grenades. At this base level, we will be supporting the build further with Fire Sprite, Grenade Kickstart, Absolution and Distribution Mod, so no matter where we are, we can always have this grenade available at a moment's notice. Grenade Kickstart will play a massive role in how fast we can trigger ignitions on most targets, so having the Stacks and Stacks mod will help with getting that 31% grenade return upon activation a whole lot more easier. And then our strength stat is at tier 5 with a 1 minute 33 second cooldown via Celestial Fire. Celestial Fire gives a bit more range and impact on single targets, which is perfect for the following build. But although its cooldown rate is quite high, Ember of Serum, Dawn Chorus, Momentum Transfer and Heat Rises effect will grant you melee energy back. This means you can have this quite low and still have your melee back at a decent rate as everything else. This next section now covers the additional mods and armor charges. So we have Charged Up which will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect an all power. After that, having the Harmonic Siphon and Reaper will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate for us. Lastly, having the Heavy Ammo Finder, Times 2 Reserves and Solar Scavenger mods will be useful for heavy weapon usage over a long period. Now lastly for the weapons being used, we will be using the Polaris Lance Exotic Scout and this is one of the most underrated Exotic Scouts that doesn't get enough love by the community. It has everything an endgame player may want when dealing with mini bosses from distance, with infinite reload on precision hits, increased damage via this fourth round, and ease of use that makes it worth swapping an exotic heavy for. This season, with things like Kindling Flame and Flint Strike available, we can get a damage buff, free anti barrier rounds and scorch and ignitions add on just from land precision hits, which all play within the weapon's personal perks. This all in all makes an absolutely good scout into an absolutely meta scout, which will be picked up over time and dominate most endgame content. Although any solo scout can work here, the Polaris is a one of kind exotic that is literally designed for this season alone. For heavy, we have the Apex Predator with Vorpal Weapon and Reconstruction. The following is a must have crafted solo heavy from the last witch raid, with the following being ideal raw you want to try and get to craft. 
perfect for taking up bosses, the mini bosses over a long period of fighting, I do recommend you try and get one as well. Although, if that is not the case, then the Code Duello gets sold by Banshee and Zer from time to time, while your third option can be just picking any solo weapon you want to go from there. So the funny thing about Polaris Lands is that it's always been a great exotic to have and use wherever you go, since it can refund armor back to back while also dishing out high damage. It's one of those weapons that you may not see a lot of usage in most dungeons, raids or GMs, but when given the opportunity, it will shine amazingly in such activities. Now with Season 23, Seasonal Mods and the ability to become Radiant and start scored ignitions via the Kindling of Flame and Feeling Striker mods, this once other way exotic has now become a must-have meta weapon when doing ending content. Its capability of applying Scorch on precision hits via our seasonal mods is an amazing add-on that shows just how powerful a single perk upgrade could make most weapons in game. From a safe distance, I'll be applying Scorch, Ignitions, getting ammo refunded, applying the sticky grenade effect, and also applying a debuff, all of which is being done by one weapon only. No fragments or mods, just the weapon and seasonal mods alone. On its own, it's quite overwhelming, but adding on key fragments and dawn cores to the following set does allow the build to be a bigger powerhouse in the right hands. For example, dawn cores will be increasing our scorch damage a bit more, and when combined with Ember of Ashes fragment, this will reduce the amount of hits needed to trigger an ignition with the following. At the same time, we'll also be getting many energy back from scorching targets which, when combined with the Ember Scorching Fragment, means that we can trigger even more ignitions via our abilities alone. Just these fragments alone will allow our nice routine of triggering Radiant when possible and then applying that heat all through our build and repeat, and thus provide a hard hit and extraordinary build you can carry everywhere you go. And this is not anything new, as many of you have already been doing this method with weapons that can apply Scorch easily. But this one seasonal mod change allows the following to excel not only within its ideal range, but content as well. This is the build you want to have for the entirety of the season because of how flexible it is in content. And since the following combo won't be around forever, now is the time to equip and use it if you want an easy to use solo build that requires little thinking. I do enjoy these types of builds that I know everyone can follow and do on their own since 90% of the items shown can be easily gotten or replaced. However, even without the key fragments or exotics used, as long as you have the seasonal mods as mentioned, then the following can still be replicated with high success. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And for more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.